but I can hear grinding noises. All right, so this is, uh, as Eric said, um, the M phone. I, I thought I'd start at least with the uh, introductions here. This is myself, RJ, who gave the NSMARTS talk yesterday, and of course, Eric. Um, I had assistance from McCrary University in Kampala, where they gave me a seat for a whole of a month and a half, which was fantastic. My two assistants, Richard and Ronald there, who are fantastic, and if you ever need an assistant in Uganda, you should talk to me, because they're good people. And Eric Cantor of the Grameen Foundation. Uh, so I, I thought I'd give a basic uh, view of this, which is just to, to move rural users to um, asynchrony and asynchronous communications. And this is just messages rather than direct communications, you know, email versus your phone call. Um, and, the, and the reason to move this, move people to this is really that everyone wins on such a system. And I'm going to give a brief argument as to why the, both the providers and the, the users will benefit. So first we start with the providers. And uh, the big problem with, with what the providers have nowadays is, is this graph down here, which came from an MIT study of the U.S., but we're pretty confident that the users' patterns are consistent. You, know, you have this huge peak at some point in the day where people are making all of their calls. And the rest of the time, the network is not being utilized to the, to the extent that it could be. And so you have this huge amount of white space, and they have to provision like they, like they need to be at the top uh, of, the, of the stack all the time. And so this is you know, provisioning for peak rather than average case, and this is what uh, the Internet has done for us in packet switch networks to move people away from these sort of uh, systems. So the way that this helps is, is, is too much, uh, the way that asynchrony helps here is it moves people away from the peak. If you're able to delay their communications uh, until the network is idle, then the communication is, most, is almost free to the provider. And so we're able to provision for the average case, and this allows the existing equipment to get much better utilization. You know, right now, there's the cell towers are tipping over all over in Uganda because it's old infrastructure and they don't have the money to put in new things. And so if they were able to move users to asynchronous communication schemes, you know, they would get better utilization of their hardware and not have to upgrade things. And the other thing is that it's cheaper to install new infrastructure because, again, you get more use out of the hardware. So cheaper, uh, you know, less, uh, uh, you know, technically sound equipment can go into these areas and still service all the users in the area. So this is the argument from the provider side, which I skimmed over slightly because I don't have any time. The user advantages are, are a little more, a little less intuitive. The most obvious thing is the extended operating range, which um, rural users have a tendency to travel a lot. You know, you will live in the village where there is, or live outside of the village, outside of the trading area where there is no communication, but. On a weekly basis, you come into the village to buy supplies, to sell goods, or these sort of things. And if you use asynchronous communications, right now in, in their home village, they may not have connectivity, but they go to the, the trading post and they do. If they send a message or do something like this uh, in their village where they have no connectivity and walk into connectivity, the message gets sent. And it seems to them as though the, the range of the equipment is much, much wider than it actually needs to be. There's also huge cost benefits to this, mostly from the provider side. Because right now, uh, direct communication in Uganda specifically is very expensive, much more expensive than here. Uh, even SMS is expensive at three cents uh, US per, per message. So if, if we really believe that the providers get uh, as big of a gain out of this as I'm arguing that they do, uh, you know, they would have uh, reasons to push users to asynchronous communications and uh, thus pro uh, you know, pass those gains on to the users. Uh, so what we decided to do, uh, due to the fact that I'm strapped for time, we missed a, a slide, but we wanted to do a voice message system based solely on the fact that SMS is not used very uh, effectively in the developing world, which I'll get to in a little bit. So we built this thing called the M-Phone, which is uh, just a research prototype which allows you to send voice, basically every type of message, uh, voice and uh, text, to any address you can think of. You can send it to email addresses, whatever. Uh, so we went, oh yeah, here's an example of it, uh, translated to Luganda. Uh, I'm obviously not a user interface designer, but uh, I think it's workable. Uh, so we went and deployed this in Uganda this summer, and I spent a month and a half there. We went to around 250 users in 10 villages, uh, two different kinds of villages, because we wanted to test exactly who would get the most use out of this. Uh, there are villages with intermittent connectivity, you know, it tips over in the middle of the day because uh, the, it's under-provisioned. Or, you know, you're just only getting signal in this village because of 
radiation uh, propagation properties, and sometimes those don't work out. So, you know, they're losing network at least every day was our, our quantifier for to pick these villages. And then other villages, connectivity at all, generally they hike for a couple miles to go find a hill where they have connectivity. They all still have cell phones. Um, and I think that's just a Uganda thing. So these two villages, Jabogan and PG. Jabogan, you can see, was the one where we have a lot less connectivity. Uh, and PG is actually supposed to have really good connectivity. But we found it surprisingly easy to find villages with, with uh, either no connectivity or very limited connectivity. It was only covering the trading posts and only covering areas of really high population because that's the only way people or providers are going to get any money out of it. The, uh, the results are interesting. The biggest thing, we, we, we did a lot of tests to see if voice messages could replace SMS or could replace direct calls. And the primary finding is that it absolutely could replace SMS. Everyone hates SMS. They hate it with like a fiery passion of, I never want to use this. But the fact is, it's, you know, at, you know order, you know, 10 times cheaper than, than a direct call, and I need to make this communication. And so the, the general model the users would take would be, all right, I'm going to make all of my direct calls, and then once I start running out of money, we're going to start sending SMS. And that's the only reason people use it. It doesn't fit with the language. The usability is terrible. You can't send it to people without literacy. All of these things. Um, there, there was th this neat use of... Uh, of SMS for, for the, the granularity communications, which was the last thing. If you have uh, 100 shillings and, and an SMS is 50 shillings, you don't know exactly how many direct calls you can make with 100 shillings. But you know exactly how many you can make with, with an SMS. And so they would use SMS to budget their communications very effectively. And that's something that I modified the M phone to be. Um, as far as the voice messages, users absolutely love this. It, they, they argued that it was uh, more intuitive, they could send it to people again who, uh, you know, uh, didn't have or had uh, uh, literacy issues. Uh, it was automatically localized to the local language because everyone's just speaking in the local language. Uh, the, the benefits were were were, were uh, wide in that. Um, it was interesting that the users could understand the range extension. This was a little bit of an argument with my assistants to figure out the appropriate way to ask this question because it's the least intuitive user benefit. But once we realized that they used SMS to do this, but only in a, a backwards way because SMS generally on the cheaper phones, you, can't, you don't store the message locally when you're outside of a network. You, uh, it, the message sending fails if you're out of network, which is a, a terrible decision on the designers of SMS. But the other user, the message is stored in the network. So they'll send SMS if their direct call fails, which is exactly what we're talking about. So the users do understand dealing with a, uh, lack of communication but with asynchrony. They just know that it doesn't work with their phone for receiving. Um, we gave an even higher granularity of communications, which the users loved. You have per second pricing, so they can record a message, figure out how long it is, and then record another one if it's too long and price out their messages exactly. Um, it, it was fantastic. And uh, the, 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 the last result to take out of all of this is just uh, there aren't very many times where SMS is actually the appropriate technology for the developing world. It is generally used because it's one of the few APIs we have to develop for. And that's uh, faulty at some level. So if, if you can think of other technology and other communication systems, then there's you know, a huge amount of benefit uh, to the users. And I believe, well, yeah, so future work, we've demonstrated that the users get the advantages. And that's fantastic, because this was the primary thing we weren't sure. We have all this data from the US saying it should work. Uh, and now we know, you know users would love this, at least in Uganda. Uh, and now we need to demonstrate that the providers would love this, which is a much scarier argument all in all, because they've been worried that we're going to move communication away from their money-making areas, such as direct calls. But, you know, that, that's just an argument that users are going to benefit from it. All right, so, yeah, that's the M-Phone. Uh, now, we're, now we're at questions. There must be questions on this one. <laughs> Have you worked with the carriers uh, at all? Well, MTN was slightly involved uh, with this particular MTN, so the Ugandan coverage. We've talked to them. They aren't directly involved at this point. The next phase, we presumably will need to integrate with them. Uh, how many carriers are there? In, in Uganda? Yeah. Uh, four? Four sounds right. Three or four. It's one of the two. Are you, it's talk a, it's a, are you talking to the others? Area. What's that? Are you speaking with the other ones, the other carriers as well? I don't have any connections with them as much. We, uh, I think Eric knows people at Vodafone, he tells me. But that's, uh, that's the two. Uh -huh. 
Uh, so uh, they, they saw this as threatening and you calmed them? There's or? been some worry about that from some channels. I, you know, we haven't had any in-depth discussions about uh, too much of this at this point. There's some people who are very excited about it, some people are worried about it. It's just generally what your job depends on. Uh, hey, Curtis. Uh, <clears throat> so, do you feel any need for providing different levels of latency based on kind of user needs or different application concerns? And I mean, this is motivated by the use of kind of SMS for financial transactions. And, and in that situation, like high latency reduces trust and confidence in the actual transactions being conducted. So, for example, if your confirmation message takes a day or eight or 12 hours, you may have less confidence in the actual execution of that transaction. So, is there a role for finer grand control of latency and quality of service kinds of issues? I think from a computer science argument, you say yes. Like, you know, you give users options and they choose it. But this part of the study, I found out that the answer is probably no, that that will just be a total waste of time. They have, like, they have a bunch of stuff in SMS that it just isn't used. Um, the big complaint, one of the big complaints we got about SMS is, again, the, the unreliable delivery. And every village, it's like, do you know that if you just do this, there'll be SMS receipts, and nobody knows that. It's part of every standard and every GSM think tower. No one uses it. And it's very likely that if we implemented some sort of tiered service for any of these asynchronous communications, people just wouldn't use them. They'd pick the cheapest one and not understand what was going on anyway. So what about from the service provider perspective? Let's say you're offering financial services over an asynchronous channel. Not from the user perspective. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that probably would work. That seems a lot more feasible. Obviously, I mean, I, I don't think, like, uh, voice SMS is probably not the area to do uh, that sort of communicate that sort of uh, stuff. That seems a lot more SMS like. As for the few applications where SMS really fits would be would be banking, I would think, unless you just were doing again communications. So, uh, but either way, that would be valuable, I believe, from the provider's perspective, at least. I don't understand uh, where exactly you are storing the message. Oh, so, I mean, the, the, the way to get asynchrony benefits is to store the message on the phone first if the network isn't up. And that's the big difference between this and traditional SMS where the message is not stored on the, on the sender's phone. So once you make it a full uh, store and forward stack the whole way through, it doesn't really matter. At any point, you can have disconnection and just hold on to it and wait until the network comes back. So what is the longer term plan? Is the longer term plan to keep the message in the phone, or is the longer term plan to sort of do store and forward within the network? You, within you, the get, you get none of the benefits if you don't store it on the phone. The provider, again, has to take the message immediately if uh, it can't be stored on the phone, and then you don't get any of the benefits of pushing people away from the peak times. So, but memory is cheap, way cheaper than it was during the original design of like GSM. So that's not a huge concern. And our plan right now, we're, we're, we're pushing this down to much cheaper phones than the ones we started with. <laughs> and we'll, we'll do exactly that. Thanks. Curtis, a lot of the logic of this depends on uh, the assumptions of use patterns in developing countries being the same as they are in the US. Did you have an opportunity to, to confirm that um, we, with any of the providers in, uh, in Uganda? I have like uh, anecdotal evidence from Uganda, and we have some hard data from uh, Ghana that I've heard of. We haven't done a deep analysis of it yet. At least in Uganda, it was exactly what I'm talking about. The, the networks tip over at 4 p.m. Like the villagers don't have access to it. And I mean, that's that's an example of exactly what I'm talking about because it's every weekday at 4 p.m. the networks tip over, and that's under provisioning. So uh, that's enough for me to say that this is probably good. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm not so worried about it. It's, it's such like a, a, a classic example all the way through networking exactly this design, uh, or this, this usage space. I was just curious. There's a, a service uh, and, and device that's been, I think, released just in the last few couple of months called Peak that's an email-only phone-like thing, which people have said... Uh, Oh, it's like what BlackBerry was when it first came out. And as far as I know, in the U.S., they're charging on the order of $20 a month, all you can eat but only email, which seems high to me. Yeah. But um, I'm just curious if you've looked into this or if you, you know how that's going or you're in contact with those guys at all. I haven't heard of that. There's a couple industry players in this space. 
there used to be a company that did something very, very similar to this in the U.S., and it tipped over because it's not really feasible when you have connectivity all the time. It doesn't really give you that many benefits. If the network's already over-provisioned and nobody really cares, uh, then that goes out. And then there's a couple companies that do this. In the development world, they tend to not push the message to the phone because that's hard, uh, and that requires writing, uh, you know, client-side code, which is difficult in the cell phone world. Uh, but I haven't heard of this, this Peak one in particular. That sounds horribly overpriced because a data plan costs $20, which would give yeah, you Yeah, exactly I would that. expect that the price will change at yeah. some point. But, you know, it's a different uh, slice through the market. There's one more, I think, and then I should end. Uh, what uh, precisely do you need the service providers to do in order to enable this to work? Well, they have to let it on their network. Like, if we did this in a completely generic way, like using GPRS or something, we're not going to get the price benefits anymore. Like, the point is that, like, the, the providers are getting a benefit, and it's in their interest to, to push this onto their system, and we'll need their participation at least in that. All of the industry players that do things like this, it's a service that the providers buy and hand off to the users. Uh, it's, it's just required to do this in any sort of intelligent way where there will actually be benefits to everyone involved. Uh, how, uh, so how complicated is this? Uh, it's not, I mean, it's not terribly complicated. You just need to have both sides know about, uh, about some protocol to send voice messages. Maybe you do this over MMS and it works. Again, they're going to charge MMS rates, which are way higher than they should charge because the MMSs are taken immediately and so on. They just need to know about the scheduling and the appropriate way to tell the user, no, don't send that right now, wait for it. And that's the only thing that's really missing from the network right now. Okay, all right, thanks. Great.